Hi folks, I know it's been a couple of weeks since we were doing the pointing, but the second half of that is in this video, along with a load of the costs and a few other bits later on in the video. But for now, stick around and I'll show you how we got this second half of the wall all finished. Right, this morning I'm going to share with you what we've been up to on the lime repointing. We're about halfway through it. Will's knocked up a fresh batch for this morning, so this is the mortar going in. We just flushed out all of these joints here, so all of this is now dampened down, ready to start. We'll obviously dampen down as we go. Oh, it's windy. So we made quite good progress this morning. We've got about a third or a quarter of that section done. We've only got three bags left, so we've got to hope that we can finish it all without having to go to Taunton again, or at least without having to order a whole pallet to be delivered. I've also taken down some of the Hessia. So we've had a good week or so with the Hessian up and I'm keen to kind of get it down so we can reuse it and move it across here and then I can go over and just make sure there's nothing that needs sorting here rather than putting the scaffolding up and down all the time. There's a little bit right down the bottom that we're going to sort out but once we've cleared all the gravel and stuff away from the bottom we can finish that right at the end. For now I want to get all the high stuff done. So we've been wetting the wall down before we started but even this mix which was quite wet it's probably ready to to knock back in a bit and then we'll keep just misting it down we'll get it covered up as well we don't want to get, let it go too far so now i'm on to bashing because it really is drying quite quick although we're misting it and keeping it covered Actually dry, sunny and windy, probably not in our favour, but we're managing it and trying to look after it as it dries. Right, we are part two of our lime adventures. I'm just about to start bashing down what we did yesterday, which is quite a lot. We managed to get almost the second half done. That is all the lime we've got left. So here's how we left it. Managed to get this section bashed back, this section we haven't. You can see here, this is where there wasn't enough moisture in the, in the joint. Um, it should be okay because it's only the surface that's gone white but if it's not damp enough in there that will happen and the whole lot just becomes friable and falls apart anyway we've got all of that to bash back this is our last section up to the corner and then a run down here now without being too cowboy about it we also realized that a lot of this muck that's fallen down all it is is the lime mortar and it mixes up just fine so the deep spots not really for the finishing pointing, but the deep spots and voids that we need to fill, we're actually using this stuff. It knocks back up really well. A few stray hairs out of the, uh, stray bristles out of the brushes to remove. But apart from that, it's a good way of using up this and hopefully get all of it done in one hit.
Right, quick little rainstorm we dodged out of. We are getting close. The last remaining section is down here. It's tight, but I think we're just gonna have enough. All of this can be washed out. And then we must clip this to the wall because it's all over the place and get it painted. This plastic is no good in sunlight. And after a while, it'll go brittle. I think it's only been up a year. So hopefully we can uh, give that coat of paint, keep it nice and protected from the UV. Right, one thing I had noticed is aluminium scaffolding and lime is not a good combo. It's not the end of the world, but it does tarnish the metal, so you wouldn't want it sat on there for months after you put it away. Or at least it seems to. Yeah, I think it is doing something to it. Anyway, we'll give it a good clean down. The only bit up high left to do is that bashing up there just to knock it back, and I can do that off a ladder. All of this will get done from Sammy. Well, there we go, folks. The wall is finally finished. And it was a bit of labor of love, but I'm glad we've done it. Shouldn't need to have anything done to it for a few decades now. So if we swivel around the corner, I haven't had to touch any of the front wall here. All of this is still the original lime and it's perfectly sound. None of it's crumbling. So really happy with the fact that we haven't had to take apart all this. Uh, let's move back around here. Now the sun hasn't come around to this side of the house yet. So it's still a little bit damp from all the rain we had yesterday. Hence why it's a little bit more gray. When it dries up here is where it's undercover. You can see nice sort of pale matched in with the stone. Now, of course, it's not one of the most enjoyable jobs to do, but it's one of those that you just have to knuckle down, get it done and know that that's it. You know, there's no reason to revisit that job. Like, you know, you could spend ages decorating and then you have to, you know, go back up there and paint your ceilings in 10 years time or, or change your walls or whatever. Whereas repointing is a once in a lifetime job, you'd hope. Anyway, let's sit in here in the quiet and look at how much it costs us. There's a tenner, 10 pound a bag, including the bats. I think we use 17 bags in total. Now that includes the top end of the gable, the top kind of section, which we did back over autumn when we had all the scaffolding up the top. So this last, batch that I put up we actually only used about 12 bags so it's 180 pounds for the lime mortar remember that was all mixed up ready we knew it was the right color the right blend everything um, to match our stonework and our existing mortars now one of the benefits is I didn't have to go out well of course we've got our cement mixer but I wouldn't have had to have hired a, a mixer uh, sand and cement of course you can um, you can judge it and just order a few more bags as and when you need them but you know you want to make sure that's consistent all the way through there's no good buying your sand and then going back four months later it could be a completely different color or grit or whatever so um and and needless to say that wouldn't have been a breathable option either so we could have mixed up our own lime mortars but i'm not clued up enough to be uh, messing around with lime putties and stuff yet and really for the cost of buying them bagged and ready and knowing that it was kind of matured and sat in the bag ready to knock up um yeah i don't think we would have saved much money i've realized i haven't told you the square meter you know the area that we've covered because that would mean that you could translate from 18 bags to how many square meters that said everyone's walls are different you know we've got quite big stones up there the joints are quite wide so maybe we have used a little bit less we've certainly used less than if you had a brick wall um, but you might have smaller stonework. You might have tiny thin joints, so you might not use half as much. So with that in mind, I'll give you a, an idea anyway. We are 10 meters, give or take, from that wall to that wall. Of course, we've got this porch section, which is not part of the wall. 55, I'm going with 55. If you take this triangle up here, flip it over, plonk it on top of there, you'd end up with a three meter by five meter square-ish. Then you've got a three meter by 10 meter strip across the middle minus the window and then another bit down here. So there you go, let's say 55 square meters and you want a bit for wastage anyway. Tool wise, we've only got the, the hawk, a, a little pointing iron, uh, a mixer, we just use a paddle mixer on the STS drill, that worked absolutely fine, and a couple of those rubber 
drugs. So in all reality, low cost, yes, it took a bit of time and, and energy, but uh, low cost, high gain, because now we know that we don't have to go up that wall ever again. You know, that, that lifetime of, um, not the lifetime of the house, but certainly within our lifetime, you know, the next 30, 40 years of this house, there shouldn't really need to be much done up there at all, if any. So it's one of those things that you just gotta knuckle down, get it done, and know that you're not gonna have to be messing around with it in a few years time. So do it right, and, uh, and we can knock that one on the head, tick it off the list. I don't think there's any repointing to do on the house now, but hopefully that gives you an idea of what was involved. Some of the bits, you know, I was learning along the way, but I would say the key bits are keep the wall as damp as possible. Um, because it, it really does just draw out the moisture. If you've got a nice dry um, mortar, lime mortar in the back of those joints, so you've raked out with your sand and cement, the, the, the nature of lime is to, to absorb water and then release it again. But of course, if you put your nice putty, uh, your nice mortar in there, it sucks the moisture out of that and you can see immediately where you haven't had it wet enough uh, and it just dries and it becomes crumbly and there's no point in leaving it in. You just have to rake it out and start again. So it's better to just get it right the first time round. So keeping the wall damp and then messing around with a hessian, it's a pain. Um, you know, you've got to like put pins in the wall, you've got to drape it, you've got to keep misting it. You know, this time of year you want to be keeping it cool, cool and damp. And then of course back in the autumn when we were doing it, the issue was the opposite. We were trying to keep it away from frost and things like that. So it does take a little bit more effort, but really it's nice to work with. It's pretty easy going. You know, once you've got all the sand and cement out, you can just do a few hours here and there. You don't have to set your mixer up and set everything up and know that you're going to have a, a batch of sand and cement more to go to waste. The nice thing about that lime mortar is you can just back in the bag and then knock it up the next day again. It's nice to have that one ticked off the list. I'm certainly glad that it's over, um, but it's one that had to be done and someone had to do it and may as well be me and Will. Will had a good part to play in that one as well. So I'm going to leave it there. This. Uh, is my next project I'm cracking on with finishing the camper van the camper van will be going up for sale soon so I really want to get all the little bits finished so I'm happy with it and send it on its way um, and then of course we're jumping back to the snag list in the house I've got a few projects lined up for the garden but things are on uh, on pause a little bit at the moment whilst we still explore our options moving forwards but that's it uh, any questions, stick them down below. Make sure you check out the uh, the video that we did with Joe from Limebase. If you want to find more of the info side of things, the, the technical and the scientific side, we kind of touched on that more in the video when I visited them down there. Uh, but I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time.